actual PVC pipe. So this wasn't allowing for the electrons to flow properly, and it was coming out with skewed results. So we had to do, I know Catherine worked on the salt version and I probably did the, completed the salt version four or five times before we truly mastered it. How'd you get the chamber anaerobic? Uh, we, what we did is we had, a, we used, because it was a low cost project, we used flex seal on the outside, and we, the cathode, the large containers which held the, the wastewater and the potent water were basically large Gatorade jugs. And we were able to seal them properly and we had a bubbler which is used in uh, aquariums. And I was able to filter it through and we were able to get the necessary oxygen we needed through that and try to seal it as best we could from the outside. Interesting. Lynn. What a fascinating project, and, and you can be so proud of yourselves. If someone asked you one or two of the main um, benefits of doing this or what you really take, took away from this, other than winning, um, what would you say if, if for other members that would like to join a team or make a team? Uh, well, we had a very, a very intelligent, um, self-driven, you know, um, they're really determined team. Uh, they were all individuals, and in this team, in this project, we all came together, these individuals who all have their self-driven goals and their own ideas, we all came together, compromised on a few things in order to create this project. So that's one of the major things that I took away. Another thing I'd like to add is, uh, myself being a science and math person, somebody who likes to focus on STEM, I thought it was a good experience for a potential uh, college experience. I know I want to do a little bit of research in college and this this project really helped me solidify my uh, curiosity in science and potentially doing a research project. Okay. Any others? First of all, uber impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Great science, great business plan. That is really outstanding. You guys should be very, very proud of yourselves. That was, it's excellent work, excellent work. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. No, I'll take it home. Can <laughs> I, I was gonna say, do you want Ben to bring it back to you tomorrow? Sure, thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna read it. So remember that. Give it yeah. to me so Ben can we'll bring it back to you. Copy it. Okay. <laughs> I'm photographing it. I'm gonna take it home. <laughs> okay. Now we'll move on to what I tried to move on to. I'm glad I didn't short circuit that. That was yeah. fantastic. Um, summer tax collection to Mr. Cooper. I don't think it'll be as exciting as what we have in front of you tonight is the summer tax collection. As you know, with the city of Midland, we do have our taxes collected both in the summer and the winter, but not in the townships. And the state has ruled that you can't just have an ongoing request. You have to make this request annually before January uh, 15th. So I brought it to you, excuse me, uh, January 1st. I brought it to you uh, today so we could uh, get the resolution taken. I know we've had a little bit of discussion on maybe changing that to collecting all and not half. But clearly, we haven't done enough research on that to decide if, if that's uh, something that we want to look into. So we're staying with what has been our status quo and having the city of Midland collect half our summer taxes. And as you'll see there, if you approve this, of course, there's a, a signed resolution that you have in the minutes and you have in your packet uh, that we uh, provide to the city along with a letter to the city manager uh, requesting that we have the summer tax collection. Okay, and just to be clear, this is not a millage request. This is just the uh, legal route for us to request the taxes that have been approved to be collected. And with that, I'd ask uh, any board member for a motion that's sitting in front of you. I move to approve the resolution to impose a summer property tax levy of one half of the annual school property taxes on property within the city of Midland a complete copy of the resolution shall be attached to the original of these minutes. Do I have a support? Support. Okay, moved by Angela, support by John on the tax resolution. Any questions or comments? I'll just thank the taxpayer before we vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you, taxpayers. And now we'll move on to some NEOLA updates. So NEOLA is our policy guide that we adopted the entire guide in, in, in its entirety in October um, of 13. 
and we and when we did that, we said um, we're going to get that in place. But knowing that there will be adjustments along the way, um, particularly to Midland Public Schools. But these are um, legal updates um, that were made through through NEOLA that came to us. So it's it's time to uh, adopt them. Um, I think there's a little over a dozen of them. And then you have all of them, and I'm sure you've read through all of them. And the changes weren't big, uh, but th there are changes to all of them. Uh, accept a motion. We can move into questions or comments. Um, I would move approval of item uh, 5.2, the NEO policy updates that outlined in the uh, in the uh, the agenda. Moved by John. Support, Support by Lynn. Um, any question or comments of Mike? No, most of these, when I read them, were. Yeah. Almost edits versus changes, so. And, and, and very necessary, I mean, just to keep up with the, the, the moving target that yep. regulates how schools work and operate, so. Okay, with that, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Move on to curriculum and instruction, and we got a subcommittee report, our committee report, I believe, by Lynn. <coughs> yes, we met on Monday, November 3rd at Adams Elementary. And uh, we started with Brian Bruton discussing the modifications to the ma major change proposals timeline. A one month delay is necessary due to ongoing committee work relative to legislative changes within the Michigan Merit Curriculum enacted over the summer. And uh, Brian went over that timeline. Everything will be done on time, just a, a month delay. Then we uh, talked about the PYP preschool. Luann Bensinger presented a timeline describing the process utilized to implement the PYP preschool program currently in operation at Adams Elementary, licensure, staffing, structure, curriculum, ongoing improvements, and possibilities for future expansion were reviewed. The discussion was followed by a visit to the preschool classroom where the uh, committee was able to interact with students and have questions answered by the program director, Kelly Jolly. And that was just very exciting to be able to go into the classroom and, and see all the children at work and in different centers and, and having a real good time. Um, after that, we adjourned. And uh, anybody that would like a copy of the minutes, they are, should be out in the hallway. Any questions of Lynn? See none. I guess we're moving on to finance. And with that, we have a study committee report <coughs> with John. OK, here we go. Um, we met October 20th. Um, myself was president, Mr. Wasserman, Ms. Brandstant, Mr. Sharrow, Mr. Verlundi, and Mr. Cooper. Uh, Mr. Cooper reported that he met with uh, Ms. Lux um, and reviewed the September financial reports. No unju unusual items were noted. Uh, full financial reports will be included on our uh, board agenda for this meeting. Uh, Mr. Cooper discussed the need for a corrected L4029 2014 tax request form, which we went over. Um, uh, I believe October 20th, uh, Special Board of Education meeting, and um, it was necessary to correct uh, that document to reflect the proper split between the City of Midland between the Summer and the Wind Tax Collection, some of which was referenced in this meeting. Uh, Mr. Sharrow presented the preliminary qualification application for the February 2015 bonding proposal. Upon approval by the State Treasurer, the next step will be calling the election, um, the calling of the election at the November 24th Special Board of Education meeting. Um, their next FFO um, meeting will be Monday, November 17th at 6 p.m., which I mean, most of our meetings are on Tuesday, so meeting on Monday to note for those on the committee. And that'll be it. Thank you. Any questions to John? Seeing none, we'll move on to Bob on some gifts. Yeah, first, I have just for information <coughs> purposes, uh, we have five items totaling $3,752. Uh, they range from $40 uh, for books at Seabrook Media Center, $112 Woodcrest PTO uh, for teacher wish, wish list. Um, $1,600 from the Music Boosters Group at Dow High for fire expenses. $1,000 from Chestnut Hill Administrative Account for laminating film and copy. And then um, $300 from Juanas for uh, East Lawn Community School Fund. There is an item tonight for action. It's a gift uh, totaling $5,000. That is $5,000 from Fabiano Foundation uh, for HH Dow School Athletic Program. And that would require your action here tonight. Okay, I'll uh, accept a motion on accepting the gift from Fabiano Foundation. I um, move we accept the $5,000 from the Fabiano, Fabiano and Foundation. And support by Scott? Support. <laughs> there we go, motion by Angela, support by Scott. Any questions or comment? Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you <laughs> very much. Yes, thanks. Thank you. I think that's a big echo chamber on that one. Yes. Outstanding. With that, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous, and thank you very much. Moving on to human resources, we do not have a committee report, from what I can tell, and we have a few retirements. Yep, uh, two staff members have notified us of pending retirement dates. Mr. Troy Champagne, math teacher Midland High, will be retiring in January. And Ms. Donna Zook, a uh, paraprofessional and ESL tutor, will be retiring in February. So we thank them both for their many years of dedicated service and wish them well in their next life. I wish them well. It's a, it's a nice side of life, trust me. <laughs> With that, you'll see a list of uh, correspondence to and from the Board of Education um, in the agenda, and our next, our, our next meeting is going forward. I would highlight mm -hmm. that we have a special meeting on November 24th here in a few weeks pertaining to the village, which I'm sure Mike is going to talk a little bit about here shortly. Just want to highlight that to you and to the public. With that, we'll move into study discussion, and I'll start with John. Well, the, uh, yeah, I guess first and foremost is just thanking the taxpayers and the voters for um, reconfirming the support in Midland Public Schools with uh, renewal of the operating millage and the whole harmless millage. And uh, I know with the presentation boards that are uh, behind me, um, we look forward as we go forward, Mike and, and administration, and getting that confirmation of support from the community again with um, getting our buildings up to date, which is way overdue and uh, very very much needed uh, for the February election. So that is really great to see those results come in. I know that the passage rate for that millage proposal was quite high, um, and that's very good to see. Um, congratulations to our uh, re-elected board members, Lynn, um, and uh, and the uh, also with Pam, and then um, I'm, I'm Angela. Angela, thank you very much. <laughs> I'll help you. <laughs> New names uh, with uh, uh, with Pat Frizzy. Uh, welcome to the board. I appreciate having you. And then Mark, thanks for running. I know it's a lot to go through uh, all the the work with um, working with the stakeholders and going through the um, um, you know the, the forums and so forth with that. And I appreciate you learning a lot and bringing that to the board and <coughs> having some fresh ideas. That's one thing we learn an awful lot is uh, you hear a lot of things from stakeholders and what's out in the community. I think this will produce a lot of valuable information. So, and uh, welcome, Pat. Um, veterans coming up here. Um, as a fellow veteran, it's, <laughs> it's just a topic that's uh, near and dear and having spent many years and, and uh, holidays and, and weekends away from um, your family and friends and you think about the sacrifices a lot of the veterans have made for the country and um, I think of all the uh, MPS soon to be graduates uh, every year we have a number of uh, of our high school graduates that go into the military and and they uh, pursue careers um, and just how, how valuable that is to um, to the community and, and the MPS stakeholders and just in serving and protecting our freedoms and way of life. And uh, just thank you for all the stakeholders that, that have served and the students that will come from the school district and serve in the future. Thank you, John. Angela. <laughs> all right, well, I guess first, name. I'd like to thank the voters for not only voting <coughs> for the millage, but also me. <laughs> <So> <laughs> looking forward to the next four years. Um, congratulations to Beth and Kim, who are our shining stars. and. Um, that I, I, like the rest of you, always see Beth at all the <laughs> athletic activities that I'm at at Dow High. Um, and <clears throat> speaking of athletics, so it was a great run for the Dow High football team. Very sad to see that end. And also for my own family, the Dow High swim team, girls swim team, won their <clears throat> ninth Saginaw Valley League championship this Saturday. So it was um, wonderful. And Another thing to point out, just with all these activities, these athletic activities that I've been going to, it's great to see so many staff and administrators from the schools that attend these, you know, events and stuff. So, you know, Saturday I was at Saginaw Valley State University, and there's one of the Dow High administrators there, you know, taking their time to come. So I um, really, really appreciate seeing that. So, and also very much <coughs> liked the presentation tonight on the Innovation Award. That is. Great, great to see that. So great to know that we have those kind of children who will support us someday. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Oh, yes, <laughs> and that is all. All right, very quickly, thank you to our voters, thank you to our veterans for your service. Um, congratulations again to Beth and Kim. I, I wanted to say, 
just to touch briefly on, the, as part of the curriculum committee, we I, I was able to go um, over to Adams and, and check out the PYP program, which I get to do every day because I have a son in the program. Uh, and I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Kelly Jolly. She is fantastic. Great job finding her. Uh, she and her staff do miracles with those kids. Um, every one of them love going to that classroom and anybody who's considering it should definitely apply next year if we get to expand that program. Um, my son Connor has made remarkable gains and, and he grows every day. Uh, so I just wanted to thank her publicly for that. Um, and that's all I had to say. So. Alrighty. Well, I will e echo as well the uh, election and, and I appreciate uh, having two more years to uh, serve serve all of you and, and uh, with, with my cohorts here. And um, I actually uh, spent the last three days at the uh, annual school board conference in Grand Rapids, which was uh, just an inspiring experience. I went last year and then it had been quite a few years. And uh, you, you hear all kinds of speakers from not just Michigan, around the world. We take some classes. There's clinics offered by uh, different people out of the state of Michigan in education, whether it's a principal, superintendent, programs that are going on. And I must say that there's always room for, for improvements and, and new innovative ideas, which we saw even with the award tonight here. Um, but Midland Public Schools does a, a phenomenal job, and I would like to thank my fellow board members because when I hear of some of the things <coughs> that go on in some districts, we are a great group. <laughs> we have a lot of challenges just like everybody else, but I pr so appreciate working with professional, caring, um, respectful people. So I thank you for that. And uh, I look forward to taking some more classes and going to another convention. You come back so inspired. You, you hear so many negatives, and it's just wonderful to, uh, to learn some new things, but also build up that, that excitement again. Um, thanks to Beth and Kim. I, too, have seen them for many, many years at many events and, and my children have had Kim Forms as a teacher a couple times at Northeast and she's another remarkable teacher that uh, does remarkable things with our, our children. Um, congratulations to all the athletic teams and I know there's more events coming up and uh, beyond athletics just with drama and music and those are always great and it makes being a school board member that much more more fun. Okay. Well, first of all, I'd rather than congratulate all the candidates, I would like to say thank you to all the candidates. This is a labor of love. It's a real high paid job. People <laughs> are beating down the doors to do this uh, in these non-troubled times. It, it, it's, it, I don't know why everybody wouldn't run. <laughs> that, but that's uh, truly hats off to all of you who ran, ran again, and ran. Uh, it's, it's a labor of love and we really appreciate it. And uh, to the Dow High Innovation contestants, uh, just stellar. What, what a what a glowing testimony to them, to Dow High, and to MPS. And uh, I hope the cameras caught the trophy tonight because it's a really impressive trophy mm -hmm. and quite an impressive project. Uh, thanks to Beth and Kim, and Beth is ubiquitous at Dow High sporting events. Uh, I think I saw her as much as I saw my daughter senior in basketball. <laughs> and uh, thanks to the taxpayers for the renewal of our operating millage. Really, really appreciate that, the overwhelming support that type of a, a vote was, was uh, very gratifying and thank you very much. And to our veterans and to our students who will be serving, many of them even next year, I'd like to say thank you for that. And lastly, I'm looking very forward to Mike talking to us about what you see behind us and how we're gonna move to the next generation of keeping our facilities going in middle and public schools. So Mike, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Well, I guess um, to start off, when you hired me, there was a couple issues on the table, and we had, um, and, and, and I think everyone needs to understand, we certainly in the last um, 14, 15 months have been out there talking about millage renewals a lot. And, and if you look, when you, and you guys explained to me when you hired me that um, you just had a failed proposal, and you had multiple renewals coming forward. And if you remember, we even talked about taking them all at one time mm -hmm. as just a renewal package to get there. And so um, we've cleared those hurdles wonderfully, but those are, and those are huge because uh, between the uh, Hold Harmless and uh, non-homestead, that was 25% of our budget, but then you add in the enhancement millage and you're well over 30% of our budget. And so we've secured that portion of our budget, operating budget that we need every day to continue to go forward. 
Um, but now this one's vastly different. And so um, I mean, and already, you know, we're beginning to educate everyone because we held th this information, trying not to confuse them. Plus, we're waiting for Treasury's final approval, which will be November 17. Mm -hmm. And that's why the special board meeting to call election has to occur the week after you actually have approval, which will be November 24. Um, but this proposal was something that we knew that we needed to take a look at our aging facilities. And after our failed proposal, we heard from people that, hey, we want a long-term plan. Come to us one time with one long-term plan that's going to carry you out going forward. And so we, we have here, and you know, um, I've already began to do presentations on this. And one of the first things I talked about is um, we got these other renewals that are done for a long time. This is probably the last time we're going to have to come talk to you for a while. And once someone said, good, open with that and make sure you tell everyone. <laughs> this is the last time you're going to have to come talk to everyone for a while. But um, between now and February 24th, we have, I think, well over 25, 30 pr presentations that we're doing um, to our staff, to outside uh, groups as well. Um, I've already started with staff. Um, it's gone very well. We spoke at Midland High School last week, um, and the, the PowerPoint position went real well. Um, these boards are what we call display boards, and these are two samples. There's one for every building in the district. And there's one for the um, proposed renewal change of the central campus um, dealing with East Lawn and Carpenter in there as well. So I think it's 10 boards all together, if I'm right, Cindy? And so um, we, we want to show these two off inside here today. And, and in detail, it gives uh, what would occur at each building and project. When I say detail, not detail down to the nitty gritty design stage because that won't occur unless we're successful. Right. Um, and the architect, construction manager work for free uh, up until that point so they give you this type of work in detail and once passed um, the full design detail bidding process all that c goes forward. Um, so the, that's out there. We've, uh, those are also on our website so each one of the boards are on there. We've started a question answer um, piece on our website as well. Obviously that will grow as we hear more questions, but um, over the last few months I've picked up a sense of what questions seem to be out there, um, and we're trying to answer those on there. We have a trifold pamphlet that we'll be handing out and giving to people as we go forward that has information. You have that yep. in front of you yes. uh, right now. And it talks about that, and it's like a scaled-down version of the PowerPoint presentation um, moving forward. Um, really, when you look at, at it, it, it's hard to believe that the dollar amount amounts to what well, amounts to the work we need in our in our buildings. But really, it's 2.95 mills. Um, we show on there that would still keep you at the lowest millage rate in our county and really the surrounding area. Um, and so, th th in that way, that that's a good thing that we're being responsible for that piece of it. Um, the dollar amount gets too high, but and it, I, I want to point out to there, it's all renewal. We're not building anything. There's not really anything, any big projects, and maybe that's a good and a bad. There's nothing glamorous in there, but it's all stuff that are, are, is needed at this point with aging facilities. There's nothing glamorous about a heating system and a boiler system and electrical systems and, and safety systems put into our schools, but that's all there for energy efficiency and student safety. So uh, it's really a renewal of our district when you look at the, the vast majority of these projects going forward. So we'll lay it out again. Um, we'll have Treasury approval next week. We'll call for the election um, on the 24th. And um, lots of presentation, lots of uh, information to share with the community. And we have three, three and a half months to do it. We've started early. Everyone knows what we've been doing. We've been open and clear that we've been doing this facility study for, I think we've actually been talking about it nearly a year. Um, and we presented that facility study to a couple of groups to, to gather feedback, designed our final plan, and now it's time to go out and educa educate everyone out before February 24th. So, in good shape that way. A couple other things I wanted to point out tonight. Um, state bus inspections occur every year. We have a fleet of uh, 52 buses out there. At this point in time, there's a couple that we're going to auction off that are aged out and we'll gather the money that we can from them and move them away from the fleet. Um, and I think it's quite an accomplishment that over the last two years we haven't purchased buses. And we've done that to protect ourselves and keep money in the classroom. We can only do that so long before it catches up. We're hoping that bond will help us with that as well. And so you got an aging fleet out there, 52 buses, and every one of them passed inspection 
And so, um, great job by our mechanics out there. And I want to mention their names. John Patton, our head mechanic, and Chris McKay and Logan Tickle moved that fleet through inspection quite well. So, great job to them as well. Um, if you recall, I believe it was last, um, maybe the June meeting of uh, the close of last school year, we had a group of students do a nice job coming and present to us about the Martin Luther King um, holiday and they'd like it to make it a student holiday. At that, that time, if you recall, we've, we generally have a calendar set, negotiated through with our teachers uh, prior to the June date, and we did. Um, and, uh, but we still thought it was important that these, these young people continue the process of what they did, which they came to the board, and then we educated them at this calendar committee, and we got them in front of the calendar committee this fall, and they presented their case, and they did a great job. At this point in time, um, it was the, the feel that the, it might be cramped, too many changes to, to, to make the change for this year, but there's a informal agreement that it will be uh, student holiday next school year. And so, um, talked with the students, they feel good about that, um, and we're moving forward and, and doing some good things. And if you recall, there's a service part of that they wanna do, and so now they got a full year to work that out themselves and figure out how they do that. It really might be kinda neat to see how well our kids can do that. That's quite an endeavor them, themselves to put that together. So MLK Day. And um, I want to remind you that um, last Friday, uh, it was the last day for Ben Cronkite, one of our administrators. And ben has taken a new challenge and he's going to the be beautiful Hawaiian Islands to do it. <laughs> and so uh, Ben's no longer with us. And so at this point in time in the school year, we have filled, uh, moved Jeff Lauer uh, to the curriculum office over to fill that um, as a temporary assignment for him. Jeff's been an elementary principal before, so it would be a great job for us. And it gives us a chance throughout the year to take a look at, at uh, always, we're always looking at restructuring in order to save money and is this an opportunity that we can restructure in some capacity and not fill a position and do that through attrition versus layoffs. So um, thanks for Jeff doing that and good luck and Ben in the Hawaiian Islands. So. <laughs> and Ben, of course, and him and his family have got quite a history in Midland, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see him leave here. So. And that's all I have for you tonight. Any questions for Mike? Mike, thank you very much. We'll only report tonight, and thanks for getting that uh, long-term facilities plan, as we asked, yeah. to this point in fruition, and now we can go out and educate the public and hope we get their support. Yeah. So thank you. Okay, any others for good order? Well, thanks to all the students that came tonight. Yeah, Great for, to see all you here. For those of you who don't have signatures, I'll be glad to sign now that the meeting's over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the hard grader. <laughs> <laughs> Any other things? Seeing none, we stand adjourned. <laughs>